everyone so welcome to another video this video has actually come up in the comments a couple of times so thank you so much for the suggestion it's how many hours do i actually spend each week teaching uh, so if you're new my name is caroline i am a uk-based university physics lecturer so I can only really talk about the hours that I spend teaching from my perspective. So I am a lecturer, I work at a UK university, I am in the physics department, which is part of the faculty of well, physical and engineering sciences. Um, and it's actually really hard to get a precise number of how many hours each week I spend on teaching related activities. So the way I'm going to tackle this is I thought we could talk about semester one, semester two and the summer. And I will try to give you a feel for the number of hours I spend teaching in each of those three zones. <laughs> OK, so semester one. If you were just to look at my timetable, the first thing you could look for is, OK, how many hours do I actually have to be in a classroom delivering content? So I'm basing all of this on before the horrible pandemic and the COVID situation. So this is what I would be doing in a, in a normal teaching year at my university. So I am the module tutor on a first year physics course, um, and I share that course with a professor who's the module lead on that course. And that course runs for 11 weeks and has four hours of lectures every week. And so because we split it, I think I end up teaching roughly 24, 25 hours worth of that lecture course. So across my 11 weeks, I've got 24, 25 hours worth of teaching on that course. I also am a tutor for the small group tutorial sessions. So these are problem solving classes and I have two hours of that every week. And I am one of the academic team that works in our MSc laboratory. And I think I have four three hour sessions. So if you kind of break it all down um, in a busy week in semester one, I'll have four hours of my lecturing. I'll have two hours of tutorials and I'll have three hours working in the research lab. So what's that? That's nine hours of contact time each week. Um, obviously, that doesn't happen every week because some weeks I haven't got the lab and some weeks I'm not teaching lectures. But roughly, you can imagine that I've got, let's say, seven to nine hours worth of contact time each week. Now, that would seem like a really light teaching load. Um, but there's so many other things you have to factor in as part of the teaching time. So typically for every one hour of content that we give as a lecturer, it takes one to three hours to prepare. So if you're new to a lecture course or maybe it's the first time you've taught that material or you're having to write the course from scratch, let's say that lecture course runs for 44 hours of taught content. So that means four hours of lectures every week to the student. For each one of those lectures, you could be spending potentially three hours of time preparing. So a 44 hour lecture course teaching face to face is actually going to have probably over 120 hours worth of preparation time if you're giving that course for the first time or if you're having to develop that course material yourself. So actually now that's quite a lot of teaching time. Now, obviously, you try to know in advance what you're going to be teaching. So universities try to let their staff know which courses they're going to be teaching months in advance of the course happening. So when I started lecturing on the course for the first time, I knew several months ahead and that meant I could use some of my time across the summer to prepare for my teaching. So of course that does go into your summer research time a bit, but if you do your preparation for your teaching across the summer, then it means you have a slightly calmer semester when it comes to actually deliver the taught content. Um, I've actually now been on this lecture course for a few years, so I'm very familiar with the material. I've actually made the kind of the slides and the handouts and the resources that I use. Um, I've developed them over the years. So now I would say roughly for every hour I teach, it's just an hour worth of preparation because obviously each year you want to refresh your materials and maybe use some new examples, draw from the up to date literature. So let's say now I've got my four hours of taught lectures each week and there'll be four hours worth of preparation time. And then for my small group tutorials, well, I've got two hours of taught time, but actually the questions, I, I can do the questions, they're first year problem questions. So I probably spend an hour each week making sure that I'm ready for that class. And then for my lab class, um, I'm very familiar with the experiments. I've done that lab class for a few years. So actually there's very minimal preparation time. So let's do some number crunching then. So I've got four hours of teaching my lectures. I've got two hours of tutorials. I've got three hours in the lab. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hours. And then I've got an additional four hours of getting ready for my lectures. So I'm up to 13 and then another hour getting ready for my tutorials. So I'm up to 14 hours now. 
So in a typical week then, I'm looking at having 14 hours either in the classroom, teaching directly to the students, or getting ready to be in the classroom to teach the class. And teaching doesn't quite end there. So there's obviously you've got to get the module page ready. You've got to prepare your assessments and examinations. You've got to do marking. So if I'm now to start to factor in marking, well, my tutorials, they, they turn in questions and I have to mark them every other week. So that gives me another 10 hours worth of marking across the semester. So that's another what half an hour on average each week that I'm doing for marking for that class. I've also got marking for my MSc laboratories. Now they hand in some of their work before Christmas. And so I'll be marking for probably about eight. Well, there's 10 that come in usually in about yeah, maybe five to six hours worth of marking on my lab scripts that come in before Christmas. Then there'll be more lab scripts that come in after Christmas. So probably another, yeah, 10 hours worth of marking that comes in after Christmas. And after Christmas, my first year students take their first year exam and there'll be another chunk of time allocated to marking the first year exam and making sure we go through all the processes that the university needs. And, and this is why it's so hard to work out the overall teaching number. Um, and it comes in waves. So weeks one to 11 of semester is when I'm delivering that taught content and I'm preparing my classes and making sure everything's smooth and ready to go. And then actually when we come back after Christmas, like the weeks 12 to 15 period, I'm not delivering the taught content, but I move into a marking mode. Yeah, and I'm not sure if this is making, making much sense or if I'm making the situation more confused. Um, but yeah, essentially your, your teaching node is going to vary on how familiar you are with the material, um, how the course is being taught throughout the semester. Um, and you should definitely expect that during semester time, you'll spend a higher proportion of your time teaching than you will do in the vacation periods for the undergraduate students. OK, then in semester two, it's a bit different. So I don't have the tutorials. Um, I don't have the laboratories, but I am the module lead for a master's for a master's module. Now, being the module lead brings additional responsibilities. So I have to coordinate the other academics who teach on the module. I have to make sure that all the information is going out correctly to the students. I have to make sure the module descriptor is up to date. I have to make sure the assessment structure is up to date. Um, I have to make sure that the objectives are set, are sensible. I have to evaluate the formative and the summative assessments and the balance of those components. Um, so there's quite a lot of due diligence that you have to do if you're the module lead. Uh, so in semester two, I typically teach for the first five weeks of semester in person. So again, I'll be delivering talk content um, and probably it'll probably work out to being a couple of hours each week, probably with one or two hours preparation time. And then actually we move into the later weeks of semester. I have other academic colleagues who teach the parts of the module, but I'm still actually be involved a few hours each week as the module lead. And then, of course, the marking hits. And then as the module lead, not only do I have to spend hours marking, but I also have to spend some hours coordinating who is doing the marking because that's part of the module lead role. And then as we come out of semester two and into the summer, um, the formal taught teaching. So I don't have to go into a classroom and deliver a lecture. Um, but I will still have students to supervise. And this is where it gets a bit of a, a grey area. So in semester two, um, I will also be supervising bachelor students. So I will meet, I have typically two or three BSc students doing a final year project with me, and I will meet on minimum about two to three hours with them during the, the week. So I'll have like a one-to-one -one with each of those students for an hour. But then also I need to make sure I've got some time to prepare for the meeting and to read and help the student with any aspect of their work that they're working on. So typically for a BSc student, I'm probably looking at two hours per week. Um, so that's another potential six hours of teaching time uh, each week. And then I've got my PhD students. Now, I kind of view my PhD students as more research time than teaching time, because obviously those students are working on research areas that I'm really interested in and linked together with the group that I'm, I'm running and in. So again, though, I will meet with my PhD students for at least 45 minutes each week, and we'll probably have more conversations and email exchanges throughout the week. Um, so yeah, probably at any one time, I'll probably have four PhD students where I'm first supervising. Uh, so I'm probably looking at four to five hours worth of kind of interaction and contact time. But then again, I need to read some more of their materials and what they're producing and what they're working on. So it can bump itself up to easy to six to 10 hours each week. Um, and then in the summer period, my, my as I said, my 
my students will stop on the taught courses, but I will have master students that run summer projects and a very similar mode. I'll be meeting them with them for at least an hour each week and have a time around those meetings to prepare and get ready. And during the summer, I also will be the tutor going out to visit students who are on placement. Um, but it's so hard because these numbers will dramatically change. Like when I do my marking after Christmas, it all comes in a very intensive two week period. And actually I will spend half of my working week probably doing the marking because I need to get it out in that time period. Whilst when I'm teaching during the kind of the regular part of the semester, I may only be doing, as I said, a few hours each week teaching because I've already got the teaching materials ready to go. Um, I hope that was useful. It's I like to be able to give numbers very clearly and crisply, and it just doesn't really work when you're trying to quantify your teaching. Um, what I will say though, is that as a lecturer, you are looking to spend roughly a third of your time doing teaching, research and admin. Um, but as a lecturer, we don't typically work, say a 37 hour working week. I think lecturers do tend to work slightly longer hours. Um, and that's because we need to make sure that we've done our teaching and our admin duties for the department. But of course we want to get our research in as well. Um, so that means that we can work slightly longer hours, but I'll do another video about that because um, working hours in academia, some people work very long hours. And I think because I had quite a strong industry background, I try to be quite disciplined about not working really, really long hours and being quite sensible with my workloading. But that's probably for a future video. So I hope that just rambling conversation provided at least a little bit of insight into how many hours I work and how many of them are focused onto the teaching activities and then the breakdown of those teaching activities. Thank you so much for such a great question in the comments. I'm sorry that this was quite, I feel, a rambling answer. Um, but yeah, it's the best, it's the best I can do. Um, so if it was useful, do like and do subscribe. Do leave me comments about how many hours you spend teaching and working if you're in the university sector. I'll be back on Thursday with an update of how the week is going. So it's the week before semester due to recommence. So lots of activities happening. Um, this channel is all about university stuff. So please do join us. It's really nice to have this little academic home on YouTube. Have a good start of the week and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.